So I am going to give you a short introduction to today's uh, sermon. This was one of those sermons that came up uh, on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. It was something in my own life that I was really struggling with, and I thought, so what am I going to teach others that is in the same situation? So you know that here in the countryside, between the cornfields of Sheffield, Iowa, there's a white church with a black roof and a white parsonage with a black roof. And there's a really big sign in the entrance that say, this is Zion Reform Church. More or less everybody in the community know where Zion Reformed Church is. They hear us on the radio on Sunday mornings. They come to our uh, events here. They come and worship with us. But you know what? There's always some conflict in my heart. If somebody come and stop at the parsonage to come and teach me different ways. And you call them the Jehovah Witnesses. So you know... In the past, a couple of times, they came to the parsonage, and I wasn't at home. But my wife was. And you know, they always come in teams. And then they want to teach you who Jesus really is. And you know, their understanding about who Jesus is, is not our understanding to say that Jesus is part of the Trinity, and that He is God. They say, yes, Jesus was there, Jesus died on the cross, But Jesus is just the Son of God. He is not God. And you know what we believe? We do this in our apostolic creed. We teach this to each other on Sundays and our children. And I always wish, I I wish that they come one day and visit when I am at home. That was a wish. And I was more or less ready for a day like that. Well, after nine years of uh, training in a college, I'm very sure that I'm ready for that. And guess what happened this week? (laughs) My golden opportunity. They knock on the door, and I thought it was a member that came to pick something up. And I opened the door, and I saw somebody sitting in the car, and these two young ladies standing in front of me. And they have this uh, document, this information in their hand, and I knew this is the moment (laughs) that I am waiting for, for four years. Because they sent me personal letters to say that who Jesus is, and that if I want to uh, give my life to God, I have to change, and, and, and all those things. And I think I messed up. I think I made a big mistake. Keep that in your mind. Because we're going to read from the Word of God. The first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 16, verse 13. So listen to the first part of it. Be on your guard. Stand firm in faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Listen to this again. Be on guard. Stand firm in faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Do everything in love. So this is a part where Paul is teaching the people in in the first letter to the Corinthians, in their context, listen, there will be so many different voices that you will hear, but stand firm. Be ready so that you do not fall. So this is the first part. Paul is teaching a congregation, followers of Jesus Christ, to stand firm in what they believe. So then, let's go to uh, the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, and we are going to read from verse 16. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the devil are evil, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Listen to those words again. 
Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to the bouchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with songs, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We will read Matthew 28 a little bit later. So now you hear, this is all that I heard in my life. Stand firm. Protect your faith. Stand up. Do not let other people teach you something different. And it's exactly what Shelley taught us today with children's time. There's so many decoys that we can choose to follow So many small differences that can sound so right. And here I am, standing in front of the two Jehovah Witnesses. And I said, you are so welcome, but but I want you to come to my office. I want them to make it clear that we go to my office, which is at the church, so that they can know with whom they're dealing with, but they did not know with whom they're dealing with. And I said, I want to ask you something. Who do you think I am? No, they don't know. I said, so do you see this white building 10 yards from my door? What do you think it is? No, a church. I said, correct. So now, usually, in rural areas like the area that I live in, There's a building next to the church where people live. What do we call that? I said, a parsonage. So what is a parsonage? I said, that's a place where the pastor lives. I said, so I'm the pastor of Zion Reformed Church. Welcome here. Can we go to my office? No, we can just stand here. That's okay. And I said, what do you want to teach me today? And I said, Well, you know that we go through a tough time in the world and there's so many war and there's so many struggles and we just want to come and share a Bible verse to you so that we can uplift your spirit. And I said, that's good. And they start the first question. You know that question. Do you believe that the world is in war? Do you believe that the world is at war? I said, yes, there's a few wars going on in the world. I know the one that is in the Ukraine and Russia right now. And I said, but listen, let's stop the conversation here. I said, I want to ask you, can I come and visit the Jehovah Witness place of worship on Saturday? Because I want to teach them who I think Jesus is. Will you allow me to do that? Mm -mm. No, no, that's not going to happen. I said, but don't you think it's a little bit disrespectful to come at a Christian church, a Reformed church, which you know is a Christian church, which you know what we believe, and you want to come and share a different Jesus to me? You want to introduce a different Jesus to me that, that I'm wrong saying that He is God. I said, this is our faith. This is what we believe, and that's what happened over Easter year at Zion. We said we believe in God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the Son is God, and He saved us. Are you okay with that? Mm Mm-mm. I said, so I think it's disrespectful. So I said the following. I don't know where you find the list with addresses and names on it, but please remove my name and the church name from your list. And I want to make it clear, never come here again, because you are disrespectful, and I do not believe in the Jesus that you believe in. We're very sorry, sir. We are very sorry. That was not the purpose of this visit, but we will go now. And I walk in the house, and I thought, yeah, got them. (laughs) You know what? As the day went on, I realized I did stand firm in my faith, for sure. They will never come here again. But what did I miss? 
What I did not think of. That was my moment to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That was the moment where I could say, listen, I want you to find peace in Jesus Christ. I want to use every opportunity like the word teaches this morning and these letters to say, hey, but let me introduce you to the right Jesus. Because obviously you have the wrong one. And I did not use that opportunity. Because the only part that I understood was stand firm in your faith. Do not let others be a decoy so that I can follow my faith. That's all that I heard. But I also heard the words where the Lord said, whatever you do, use every opportunity and do it in love. And teach them the peace of God. I missed that. Will I ever see those girls again in my life here at Zion? I can promise you, never. And that's sad. I won the stand firm uh, race that day. But I lost the opportunity to share the gospel. Because let's go to Matthew 28. Matthew 28 from verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you all the way to the very end of age. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. I missed. A teaching opportunity. I missed the opportunity to share the gospel. So what does this mean today? Here we sit. Maybe you had a Jehovah witness that knocked on your door. And you felt uncomfortable. And you just show them the door. There you go. Maybe we stood up and we have something ready to say. But maybe that was only the one, the one part. Standing firm. So to stand firm is okay, that's right, that's what we have to do. But there's the other part, use the opportunity to share the right Jesus, to share the real Jesus, the Jesus which is God, the Jesus that loves you and me. Parents, Carter, Alexis, today, this is your opportunity. We know that we always teach our kids sometimes just what not to do. But do you teach them ever what to do? Do you hear the difference? I told those two Jehovah Witness girls what I do not stand for and what I do stand for. But did I give them the option, something better, something greater, something that is God the Almighty? No, I did not do that. And parents, we, we have to Be careful that we just do not tell our kids not what to do. But sometimes to come and teach them what to do. This is a big thing that we have to work on. And I want to ask you today. Whenever somebody stands in front of you and you have this opportunity to share the peace of Jesus Christ. Will you know what to say? Will you know if they come and say, but listen, if you go and read John, they love to bring John into the context and say, oh, no, no, Jesus is just the Son of God. He is not God. Do you have something ready in your mind to say, listen, but this is what the Bible says. And I think sometimes we lose that opportunity because we do not have the wisdom and knowledge. We are not prepared for that opportunity. I think it happens with us. We just know what we're not going to allow. The moment we have to say, but learn the following, we don't know where to start most of the time. If I ask you today, there's a Jehovah Witness in front of your door, 
Stand firm. Do not let them walk over you and your faith. But I want you to go and teach them who Jesus is and why do we can use Jesus as the Son of God, which is God, as part of the Trinity. Where is the Scripture that we can prove that? How are you going to teach that? Because your backup will be the Word of God. And at that moment, you cannot say, let me call my pastor. At that moment, it's the opportunity and maybe the only opportunity to say, but this is what the Word of God says. So I want to ask you today, parents. It's good. Teach your kids what not to do. But do you know to teach them what to do out of the Word of God? That colleague at work, you can just stand firm, say, this is my norms, this is my values. But can you teach them why he or she needs to follow these norms and values? Can you teach them why they have to follow Jesus Christ out of the Word of God? This was that moment in my life this week that I waited for so long. I wish I can go back to Monday. Because I will not do it again. They know that I'm firm. They know that I am on God. But they don't know my Jesus. And that's a missed opportunity. Parents, do not miss that opportunity to teach Jesus, the real Jesus, to your children. I want to end today, and I don't see Shelly here. You know, this is how the Holy Spirit works. Shelly and I, did not talk about my sermon today. Guess what Shelly did this morning? Brought a turkey into children's time and said, this is a decoy. This is sometimes how the world wants you to think. What happened at my door this week? A decoy, a dead turkey was standing in front of me. Okay, they are not dead, but... There's a moment that I could follow a decoy. But I did not teach the decoy, the real Jesus. Learn out of my mistakes. Be ready. Because if you go and read the letter to Ephesians, chapter 6, that whole part of you have to have the armor of God, it tells you to be prepared. Are you prepared to have that conversation with anyone from this moment? If not, you phone me this afternoon. I'll give you the Bible, Texas. And I'll teach you what not to do. May the Lord use you in every opportunity to share the gospel of peace. Amen. Do you see that she just smiled up? <laughs> Is it this weird accent? Rowan, Colin Barkema, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, thank you for this opportunity where we as a family of God, Zion Reformed Church and all the grandparents and uncles and aunts and friends here today, have the opportunity to be with Carter and Lexus in this journey. That we can teach Rowan how to live according to the life of Jesus Christ. Thank you for this miracle, Lord. Thank you for, for blessing us with children. Thank you, Lord, for good health. Thank you, Lord, that we know that you promise in Matthew 28, that you will be with her and with God and with Lexus until the end of days. We praise your name. Amen.